Very good morning. I am Shilpa. Welcome you all to the NCERT live phone in program. Our planet is full of variety and variability of life. And our topic of discussion is related to this, which is biodiversity. And to discuss this further, in the studio we have Dr. C. V. Shimri, designated as the Associate Professor in the Department of Education in Science and Mathematics in NCERT. I welcome you, ma'am, to this show. Thank you. It's nice so to let's, be back. So let's proceed to understand our today's topic of discussion. So ma'am, why not to commence our conversation by understanding the meaning of biodiver biodiversity? Okay. Biodiversity uh, is, uh, if we have to define it, then maybe it will be important for us to go to the definition coined by IUCN, uh, that is the International Union for Conservation of Nature, the authority which decides on or uh, which has a last say when it comes to nature or uh, conservation of nature. And so maybe we can have a slide of the definition of that uh, so as to for the benefit of the viewers. Mm -hmm. So if we can just read out, according to IUCN's Convention of on Biological Diversity, biodiversity is the variability among living organisms from all sources including besides others or inter alia, terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic ecosystems in the ecological complexes of which they are part. This includes diversity within species, between species, and of ecosystems. So this is a very elaborate or uh, for some students, it will be a very cumbersome definition. So simply put, we can just define biodiversity as variety or variation or kinds of organisms on this planet Earth. OK, that includes like everything, species, all living, organisms. all living organisms, yes, and that too, and when we uh, divide this biodiversity, we divide it into different uh, types, as I just mentioned, okay. into species or mm -hmm. genetic diversity, species diversity, or okay. ecosystem diversity. So those are the three basic ways that we try to, I mean, categorize biodiversity. Okay. So, ma'am, like a species diversity, do it for, does it follow any particular pattern? Uh, uh, yes, because specific, uh, genetic diversity is very, very important uh, for, uh, for us or for the ecosystem itself because uh, without uh, genetic diversity, it will be impossible for organisms to survive. Yeah. For example, we have so many, I mean, even human beings look at that. We have, uh, there's so much variation in the, our genetic uh, makeup. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason that some people are able to survive some diseases. Imagine if we had the same genetic constitution and there was some disease that has uh, come into the population or human population and we could not survive. That means the whole human humanity will uh, disappear because of that one single disease. But because of the genetic diversity that we have, we're able to survive so many uh, kinds. Some, some people succumb to those diseases, but still, uh, many I mean, human uh, beings are still alive because of the diversity that we have. And there is a very good example that I can cite for this. Uh, potato, as you know, uh, is from the South America. Uh, so there is this. Uh, so it's popularly grown in uh, the whole mountain range of the Andes. And there are so many genetic variations in that pot potato variety. Uh, I mean, potato species. And Ireland people from Ireland happen to take some. Hmm. As, uh, I mean, some some potato varieties from uh, Andes Mountains and they tried to cultivate in, in Ireland. And so they did not take the whole, I mean, the genetic, uh, I mean, they did not take all, uh, so many varieties which had different combinations of the genes. And so what happened was that they planted a few uh, varieties and there was some disease that came into it. Because of that, there was no variations, not so much variations because of which all the uh, potato crop uh, disappeared or it vanished and so they could not ha have any more. So in case if they had brought in more of those diversity or uh, uh, species which has more diversity then they will have survived. And so it's so important that we have diversity. The more we have genetic diversity, the more uh, uh, organisms or that species can survive. So some individuals will disappear or some individuals may not be able to cope with it, but some individuals will be there which will survived. So ma'am, you just said that biodiversity include all the living organism present on our planet. Yes. Right. So how much biodiversity is like known to science? Uh, so far, uh, science says that we have identified about 1.9 million. So we can uh, have that slide for the benefit of the viewers again uh, about the, so as you can see there, 
There's so many, uh, I mean, species have been identified so far. As I said, 1.9 million species have been identified. And it is estimated that about uh, 3 to 10 or 11 million species actually exist on this earth. Which mm -hmm. And so that means a lot of work is yeah. still to be done. Some goes to that estimate saying that it could be even as much as 100 million species. Okay. So we can imagine the staggering number of species diversity there. Mm -hmm. And so imagine uh, we have not identified so much of that. We are still, and we have lost so much in the process even before we co uh, got to know the species because of natural events or we don't know what were the reasons, but we have lost so much species, species be even before they were identified, you know. So those are the things that uh, scientists are looking into. It. They're trying to identify more of the species and they're trying to understand the impact of such species in the ecosystem and how it's going to impact and how it's going to contribute in the ecosystem mm -hmm. and things like that. And so. Uh, Identification of species is not just to name, okay. but to understand its importance in the ecosystem, you know. Right. Uh, so, ma'am, uh, further, why don't we understand why we need to study biodiversity? Yes, that's a very important question because we have been studying biodiversity all our lives. I would say students have been studying biodiversity even now. Uh, if we look at into NCRD's curriculum, you have biodiversity in class eight, science, you have biodiversity somewhere in geography mm. textbooks as well. You have biodiversity in uh, biology class 12. Definitely it's there. And so we have been stu studying about this or, or you even have biodiversity aspects of biodiversity even in the lower classes. Mm. But what's happening is that we end up studying only the definitions or we end up studying only the remembering only the numbers mm -hmm. how many species are there our concern has been more about numbers or the definitions and so we have not really got into the meaning of uh, studying uh, biodiversity that is by understanding biodiversity are we becoming more concerned because now what's happening is that students know uh, but they don't really ap appreciate the diversity and students understand diversity, but they do not feel connected with or emotionally feel right. connected or they don't feel anything about the biodiversity that they have studied. And so uh, why it's important is that uh, when they study this, what is expected of students is that they should be able to connect it with their daily life that, okay, we are studying this biodiversity for, because this is something that is so connected to us and mm -hmm. we are responsible uh, to, uh, to take care of it or because we, are, we were the ones who have actually, uh, I mean, disturbed the whole ecosystem and so we are the ones who have to take care of it. And it's so important to understand that first and then to feel, start feeling about it, start thinking about what can I do about that. So ultimately the objective of studying biodiversity is to how we can contribute in maintaining the biodiversity. So that's mm -hmm. the whole thing. So ma'am, I was just going through a few of the articles and I got to know about one term, ecosystem services. Mm -hmm. So what's the link between biodiversity and ecosystem services? Uh, biodiversity and ecosystem uh, services. Ecosystem services, uh, we uh, mean, from that we mean the services that we get from the biodiversity. That means how biodiversity has helped us, uh, basically. Like So it has helped us in so many ways, for example, in for food, Okay. for f I in terms of medicines, in terms of recreation. So as you can see in that slide uh, where it says the different ways eco biodiversity has helped us, helped human beings. So uh, imagine like, for example, uh, if there was no biodiversity, mm -hmm. what will happen to our food uh, security? Do we still have enough food for us? So biodiversity, when we say food, then we so uh, get so disconnected with biodiversity, actually food is also part of biodiversity that we are consuming that is part of biodiversity. And so again, so many of the social activities that we do are so connected with uh, biodiversity again, rituals that we perform. And there are so many, uh, I mean, even today, the communities are there who are still uh, taking care of uh, nature, like mm. they're still worshiping or they're protecting in the form of uh, you call sacred groves and all. And so you still have uh, so much connection with that. And you cannot do away with biodiversity. You, recreation is based on that. Educationally, it's so helpful. We have learned so much from biodiversity, how different species function, uh, how they work. Like, for example, biomimicry is something that's coming up in a very big way now. So the biomimicry is nothing but we are trying to learn how organisms are functioning. Because how nature works is the best way it works. And so we are trying to. Uh, 
understand how they are actually functioning and how we can apply those natural things in our daily life in the manufacturing of things. Uh, recently, uh, the last Nobel laureate uh, chemistry in chemistry, uh, Frances Arnold, I, if I remember her name. So she worked on something called directed evolution. You know, so this was something very interesting. Directed evolution is evolution is a natural process. You right. know, so directed evolution. She's using this process of evolution to direct, and she's directing it. Okay. Uh, that means that she's trying to uh, mutate some genes, insert it there, then let the organism evolve by itself, and then screen out those useful uh, genes from there again, and then uh, uh, then transfer it again to some organisms. Right. And so it's it's an evolution, but she's directing it, and so that has benefit benefited us so much that now we have uh, so many enzymes that is made uh, using that um, directed evolution uh, process and so we have useful enzymes which are much effective thousand times or ha even a few hundred times at least more effective than the natural enzyme that we have mm -hmm. and so we are learning so much from nature you know we're learning so much from biodiversity and so we don't realize all this we take things so much for granted and that, 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 those are the things that we need to, I mean, take it to the students that this is how uh, it is helping us or it is, uh, I mean, for the benefit of humanity. So how much uh, biodiversity is contributing. So that message has to go to the students mm. if we really want to, uh, I mean, make biodiversity uh, important right. in their daily life. Yeah. But I just think that um, aren't human beings are selfish enough that they're not even taking care of the organism like in near future or maybe who are yet to discover. They're not even worrying about it. Yes, uh, I would say again, that is true that we are human beings are always selfish by I, I don't know by nature or what but we are we tend to be more and more selfish like right now we have mentioned about uh, ecological uh, benefits we, ha we have just listed down few of those very few of those otherwise there's so much benefit that we're getting out of biodiversity so all those are just for our benefit see we are looking only in terms of our benefit if mm. we are studying biodiversity. There is also another aspect of uh, value system that we can learn from biodiversity that is intrinsic value. There is something called intrinsic value that every organism is important. Maybe we have not found the importance of those organisms in our daily life, mm -hmm. but they are still important because they have their own right to exist just because they are just like any, any other organism uh, has the right to exist. Mm -hmm. So they also have their uh, right to exist. And so that is an intrinsic value that we have to understand. We have to value that intrinsic uh, value of such organisms. And so not because there are some, uh, this organism or this species or this uh, population is providing some benefit to us. And so we should take care of it. No, we should take care, also take care of it because it has its own right to survive. And we don't know. It's just that we don't know right now. Uh, we might find the benefits of those organisms which we think are not useful for us right now. So we can find out in future that, and definitely ecosystem knows, I mean, nature knows the uh, usefulness of that organism as well. Right. Just that we humans have not found the usefulness, use, usefulness of that organism. And so the intrinsic value of every organism has to be understood by students also. Mm -hmm. So that this will also help in the, uh, I mean, conservation strategies, you know, in the long run. Yeah, because uh, if you don't take those organisms into consideration, then the uh, ecosystem, how it functions will be affected. And so you need to take care of organisms which are useful or which we think is useful or which we think is not useful. So all the organisms has to be taken into consideration when we are taking uh, any kind of conservation measures. So ma'am, uh, next is like, uh, I had read it that uh, biodiversity is on the verge of extinction. So this extinction is because of the human beings or maybe it's happening naturally. How can we understand? That? Yes, uh, there are a few ways. For example, we have seen this is for uh, said to be the sixth mass extinction that we are seeing right now. The extinction rate is accelerating right now. But we also have had five uh, major mass extinctions in the past. And that time, human beings were not there. Mm -hmm. And so, that, so now you can lo logically conclude that 
human beings are also responsible, but naturally also there is mass extinction because of various reasons, sometimes global cooling, sometimes mm -hmm. global warming in the past, or volcanoes and things okay. like that. So there are so many other uh, reasons for mass extinctions, but the mass extinction that we are seeing right now, that means the extinction of species, the accelerating rate of uh, extinction of species is because of human interventions. I mm -hmm. mean, we have all because uh, of the developmental activities which are also required but uh, we have not done it in a sustainable way because of which we are losing a lot of species okay. and there is something that's coming up in a big way now climate change mm -hmm. you know so climate change is going to impact uh, extinction of species in a bigger way again so we're going to lose more species okay because of climate change uh, one because uh, there are some species which are very sensitive to climate variation and they will, uh, and they are sensitive to egg laying and things like that. They require a certain temperature to lay their eggs, to incubate their eggs, and things like that. And there are other ways. Uh, there are other reasons why. Uh, I mean, climate change is going to impact because of. Uh, uh, I mean, the plants or organisms mm -hmm. on which they feed will be no more and because of which the organisms will impact it. And so climate change is going to impact or complicate our conservation strategies again uh, because climate change was not one of those uh, points that was taken into consideration when we were taking up conservation measures. Mm -hmm. Now we have to add another aspect. It was already difficult for us to take, I mean, come out with a good conservation measure. But now we have another very complicated Mm. factors in the name of climate change and so that's going to complicate things more again uh, in the coming mm -hmm. days and years and yeah decades to come. So Dr. Shimri are we, lose, uh, are we losing some of the uh, organism or maybe the living uh, organism faster than any other organism like a species it will say? Yeah the, uh, as I said uh, there are some organisms which are sensitive to temperature mm -hmm. will be losing more which are uh, not able to adapt to the changing uh, environment fast, we okay. are going to lose that again. Mm -hmm. And so there are uh, some organisms which are really, I mean, who are mo which are more resilient, you know, mm -hmm. which are more resilient. And so they will be able to survive for longer time. I mean, they will be able to withstand uh, more, uh, I mean, disturbances. But there are those organisms which are le uh, less resistant to changes in temperature or maybe in changes in uh, rain, I mean, humidity and things like that, all mm -hmm. other factors, abiotic factors. Mm -hmm. And so those are more vulnerable to uh, uh, these changes. And so we are going to lose more of those uh, in the near future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, ma'am, what are the different threats to biodiversity? Uh, there are uh, several threats like if we go minutely then uh, we can go uh, that way as well but we don't have so much time and so the threats uh, are like IUCN again let's come back to the International Union for Conservation of N Nature maybe if we have that slide yes uh, uh, the other slide on yes uh, oh, anyway so uh, threats to biodiversity uh, is that uh, IUCN has categorized organisms based on the, their vulnerability, like how vulnerable they are. For example, they have categorized, they have this red list of endangered species where they categorize organisms into how much, I mean, how, how they, I mean, how their vulnerability. For example, they have this uh, endangered species or critically endangered species mm -hmm. or vulnerable species. So depending upon uh, their risk to extinction, so some will have high risk, some will have extremely high risk of extinction. And so depending upon that, they have categorized uh, organisms uh, okay. which are endangered. Mm -hmm. And so that's how IUCN has done it. And uh, again, the threats to uh, losing uh, biodiversity is, the reasons for that is if we come to that, then there are two basic threats that we have been studying. So habitat destruction, as you can see, see there in the slide, habitat destruction is one. Uh, and habitat fragmentation is one. So these are the two things that we have been studying that habitat destruction is about destroying the habitat, I mean, whole patch of land. But in case of fragmentation, you are not destroying the whole habitat, but mm. you're destroying, I mean, the part, uh, maybe a, a middle portion or a few sections of the uh, habitat or the bio of the place. So that is habitat fragmentation. And so uh, this equally disturbs 
survival of species because habitat destruction definitely you'll have no more species there if you don't have, have the if they don't have the habitat to live there then organisms will not be there so if plants are not there animals will not be there uh, again habitat fragmentation like if you you may say that oh i'm just uh, removing this patch of land for road construction but you don't know we don't know how much it's affecting the organism or a species living there and how much it's impacting them and so fragmentation because of fragmentation also there is a, a lot of threat to biodiversity and so things can happen again climate change is the biggest threat now mm -hmm. so things are really going to change because of so many uh, impacts climate change is going to have mm -hmm. on biodiversity on the habitat and on the organisms so ma'am, we had just like understood about the threat and what are the possible uh, consequences of it. So how we can actually conserve it? Uh, there are several ways that we can conserve, like uh, there is, uh, government has come, I mean, international bodies have come up with uh, different conservation measures, like we have the uh, protected areas, we have the so-called uh, mm -hmm. national parks or uh, wildlife sanctuaries. Uh, so all protected areas have been identified where some places you can get in and do some activities. I mean, the people living close by or living in that place can utilize that space for their own, uh, for cultivation of things like that. There are some places which are totally prohibited depending upon the threat to the organisms living there. So. Uh, those are the ways that they're doing. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, there are other ways like we have in situ, we, in textbook we say in situ and mm. ex situ uh, conservation strategies. Like uh, when we say in situ, like this, which I just mentioned, natural way of conservation, leaving the place as it is, for example, protected areas. So that's uh, in situ way of conservation. Then we have ex situ uh, ways of conservation where you have the zoos or botanical gardens and uh, you have the, um, gene banks or the seed banks and something that's very interesting about seed bank is that uh, there is a seed bank that was uh, i mean uh, institute that started uh, in norway mm. uh, so this is uh, called svalbard uh, global seed vault and so here all the seeds of the world are being stored mm. this is because in case some seeds are lost from a specific place uh, no doubt uh, people in every look I mean every place every community have their own way of uh, preserving seeds but in case they lose it and so uh, this is another way of preserving so they are all like uh, almost 10 lakh species uh, I mean different species or uh, varieties of uh, I mean seeds are stored now in that uh, global seed bank which is located in Norway as I said and so in case uh, seeds are lost in the um, natural habitat then they still have a risk I mean some seeds to go back to and they can start cultivating that again and so uh, this is an initiative so that we do not lose the again the genetic diversity so as to maintain the genetic diversity as i mentioned the importance of maintaining genetic right. diversity so that is one effort that is being taken up internationally so almost uh, all countries are contributing to that and uh, the people who have stored it they have they are the sole authority to use that it's not mm -hmm. that the, it is there in the seed bank and so now anybody can go and use the seed no so uh, people who have contributed the seeds they are the ones who are going to they have the right to use it they are the only ones who have the right to use that so ma'am actually many students were asking why should we even try to conserve biodiversity <laughs> Yes, uh, we have spoken, I mean, our discussion has been about all about uh, how important biodiversity is. And so now imagine, why should we not conserve? I will ask them now. So why should we not conserve? If we don't conserve, what's going to happen? So we have talked about genetic diversity, species diversity, ecological diversity. Then we also mentioned about the ecosystem services. Mm -hmm. And so all those services, we're not going to get any of those in case we do not maintain biodiversity. And so it's so important for us to conserve biodiversity. Mm -hmm. And now the question may be, how, what can I even do f to conserve biodiversity? That would be probably the next question student, that might have come to students' mind. So they might think they cannot do anything, but in fact they can do a lot. I mean, if every student starts doing something, then mm -hmm. definitely uh, s some things can happen. So it starts with a seed, uh, so then it, it goes on. So for example, uh, there is a very good example of how uh, we are losing the population of sparrow. So, right. so now people are, so how do you uh, make an attempt to increase the number of sparrows? So now the suggestion is that uh, you make artificial nests, you keep uh, grains outside the ho homes, the food, the kind of foods that uh, sparrows feed on. So when there is food, animals will come. Mm -hmm. When there is a space, when, so if I, I go back to my home, 
So if there's no home, then I have no place to go back. So similarly for the sparrows also, they need home, a place where they can live uh, without need disturbances. So mm -hmm. we have to create spaces like that. And there are so many other ways also like not to disturb the uh, biodiversity or, for example, just a uh, backyard, the garden at the, uh, in front of their house or back in the school or wherever. So how do you maintain the diversity in such places? So that's how they can uh, contribute, students can definitely contribute. So there are so many other ways that they can contribute. So if they're really interested, I'm sure they'll find a way out and they'll look for solutions. Even yeah, related to this, ma'am, we have got a question from Ram. He wants to understand what at a student level we can do to save our planet and our biodiversity. Yeah, uh, exactly. So uh, just as I said, so they can do uh, small things like they can maintain a garden where uh, they can have diversity of organisms. So. Uh, I, I think we have a question at the end. So there are things like students can do. For yeah. example, the sparrow thing we have just mentioned. There will be something else in some other parts of the country where the uh, some organisms, are, the s number of some organisms are dwindling, and so they, m they have to look for some solution. So it's like there's no one solution for every place. Every place has their own problems. Some. Uh, uh, I mean, states will have different uh, animals or plants. Uh, so different, another state uh, will have different animals or plants. And so depending upon the place, you know, so it depends upon that. So uh, even for conservation strategies, it depends on that. So they have to look out for what needs to be done for that place. Right. So it's not something that's being done somewhere in some other country. Mm -hmm. So they can learn from them, but they cannot apply directly, you know. Right. So it, it is very space or, uh, I mean, place specific. Nam, you were saying you had got a question for the audience. So, if we can see it. Oh, uh, we have, uh, yes. We have a question. Maybe we can just take it there. Maybe the slide will help. Yeah. There it is. So, my question is, what are the factors that you would consider to set up a garden in your school or home? So, why I'm asking this question is uh, because uh, when we say garden, we look for different flowers, beautiful flowers, arranged symmetrically or in line. So, but is that the right way? So I'm just asking you ba based on the things that you have learned about biodiversity. So what will be an ideal garden? Hmm. So what kind of garden that would you set up in your school or in your homes or wherever it is? So, so then that will tell us how much you have understood about biodiversity. So. Yeah, so that's a question. So you can just actually reply to this question by sending your answer to our email ID or maybe by the social media platform so that we will try to include your name in our next episode. So ma'am, let's move forward and let's take few more questions. Mm -hmm. From the Mega guy, we have got a question. Dear ma'am, I am Mega and I am working on a project related to biodiversity for which I need to quantify biodiversity and simple way if you could suggest to measure. Yeah, uh, uh, biodiversity basically when you talk about biodiversity uh, then uh, you talk in terms of species richness and species evenness. Mm. Richness is like uh, for example just let me take an example of this NCRT campus since we are here, in, here on this campus. So in this NCRT campus how many species are there? For example uh, let's say 100, one to 200 species, different species of plants and animals are here. So now, and that's a richness, 200 species uh, and 200 different species and what, what is the pop number like, total number is like say 1,000 different organisms are there which belong to 200, which are belong to 200 different species. Mm. So that is species richness, the numbers, the total number. But when you say evenness and so out of those 200 species, how many of what? For example, I can say 10 trees of neem, you know, so th then 20 uh, periwinkle plants, things like that. So then, so how much of that? So then you quantify that. So that's how you start going about when you mm -hmm. talk about uh, quantifying biodiversity. So that's the first step that you do. Okay. So even we have got the same question from Rima. Uh, though the ma'am has answered it, what is the method of quantification of ecosystem services? Uh, we have uh, quantified in the sense we have uh, listed down the benefits, ecosystem services, cultural benefits, human provisions, uh, ecosystem regulations and support. So that's how we have quantified for our mm -hmm. own benefits. So uh, we have discussed that and I think we have even showed the slide of that. So uh, viewers can always go back to that slide right. when they see the recording. 
So, ma'am, uh, let us take another question, though we have less in time. Measuring the sustainability of an ecosystem by the relationship of the species, please tell us. Yazuki. Okay, measuring the sustainability of an ecosystem by the relationship of the species. So, again, this is in terms of biodiversity, how diverse it is. So, the more diverse it is, it is going to be more stable. Uh, so, you need more diversity so as to sustain the ecosystem itself. So, I will just put, since we are running out of time, I am just putting that in one line. So, you need diversity so as to sustain the di uh, biodiversity. Right. So, today we understood about the biodiversity, its importance and also we learnt about how to conserve it. Thank you so much ma'am for Thank such you. knowledge. Thank you. So, if you have any further question or any suggestion related to our today's episode, then you can dial into our toll free number or can drop an email to us or you can contact us via our social media platform. Till then take care and keep watching Kishore Manch.